The Jewish people have a, an issue. There is something of a theological conundrum that happens to them. And of course, it uh, is the same dilemma that happens to many of us in, in our day. Uh, but uh, perhaps they were the first to confront it uh, biblically, theologically. And this uh, issue was uh, very simple. Why are bad things happening to good people? Because when the Jewish people did return from Babylon, they left behind their idolatry. And uh, there was a, a, you might say, a dedication, uh, a commitment uh, to follow the, the ways of the Torah and more. And what we read in uh, 2nd Maccabees and 4th Maccabees as well, as we read this, uh, about the story of the martyrs. They're known as the Maccabean martyrs. They are Jews who give their life because they want to remain faithful to the God of Israel, and they want to remain faithful to laws of the Torah. And in all of Jewish history up to this point, this has never happened before. Uh, there's the people suffered for uh, breaking God's law, but now they're suffering for keeping God's law. And of course, this creates, uh, again, a, a theological problem. And the answer for the Jewish people is going to be found again in the scripture. Because as we mentioned before, there's no king to guide them, and there's no Jeremiah, there's no Isaiah on the scene. And so Jews are driven back to the biblical text, and they're going to seek uh, an answer to this problem and others, yes, from the, the Bible itself. And they come to a place, uh, they begin to understand uh, that God is a God uh, of life. He's not only the source of life, but He is life itself. And um, God is not a, a God of death. And it's quite uh, telling, or you might say it's quite interesting, that um, the Jewish people, for example, refused to fight on the Sabbath because they thought that uh, uh, engaging in warfare would be violating the Sabbath. And while they were fighting the Greeks in the initial stages of their, uh, of their rebellion against Greek pagan rule, uh, the Greek armies would go out and look for Jews on the Sabbath. Uh, Jews would not resist, and uh, they would uh, be slaughtered. And again, the Jewish people had to turn back to the scripture. And one of the scriptures that they highlighted was Leviticus chapter 18, verse 3. God says, these are my commandments, and you shall live by them. And then they understood, wait a minute. We're not to die by God's commandments. We are to live by them. So therefore, it is permissible to fight on the Sabbath. In fact, all the commandments can be broken in order to preserve life, with the exception of three. That's idolatry, immorality, yes, and murder. And so this, of course, uh, brings about a change in the way Jewish people uh, understand, understand the Sabbath. And so Jews return to the scripture and they look for the answer. Um, they very naturally latch on to the story of Cain and Abel. Abel is murdered for no good reason, it appears. Uh, God expresses his anger at Cain and uh, promises that the, the blood of Abel, righteous Abel, will be vindicated. And the Jewish people began to see themselves and their martyrs as a figure, just like Abel. Uh, they are being persecuted, they're being killed, yet God will vindicate them, yes, for being righteous. And the vindication, as they understood it, is the resurrection and the resurrection from the dead. So it's at this time, this period in Jewish history, that the resurrection and the understanding of the resurrection comes into a much sharper focus. It's not invented or cooked up at this time. It's always been there in the scripture, uh, but now uh, more than ever, uh, the teaching of scripture needs to be, you might say, finessed and uh, studied and brought to the forefront. And so 
the rewards, punishment uh, in the afterlife has become very much a part of Jewish life. And of course, the certainty of the resurrection, the rewards for the righteous and punishment for the wicked, of course, are part of the New Testament uh, as well. And so the Jewish people, uh, long before they de identify with uh, Isaac and the story of the, the, the binding or the sacrifice of Isaac, they connect uh, with the story of Cain and Abel. And it's in that story that they actually find hope because God promises vindication. And when they think of vindication, uh, especially for the righteous, they begin to understand that that vindication isn't simply God is gonna somehow re revenge the death of Abel, but in actual fact, the vindication comes with the resurrection. And it's the resurrection of the dead Yes, the life, you know, that occurs in uh, the world to come, that the righteous, the faithful uh, will, be, will be vindicated and they will find their reward. Those who have been unrighteous, those who are sinners, those who are wicked, will also have to face a judge and they will face some form of punishment. The figure of Abel, it becomes known as the son of man. Literally in Hebrew, Ben Adam, the son of Adam, the son of man. That's the figure that Jesus adopts for himself. That's the name and title that Jesus adopts for himself. He calls himself over and over again, the son of man. It's his uh, favorite way, you might say, of describing himself, his favorite name uh, for himself. In all of that, he's not only relating to the suffering of the martyrs uh, during the period of the Maccabees, but he's pointing to himself as being one who dies a unjust death, but at the same time he will be vindicated by God. And that vindication is in the resurrection. And the Jewish people, by the way, went even one step further. They understood not only will there be a resurrection from the dead, but there will be a final judgment. And the ones that, the righteous one that was killed, yes, uh, for no reason, this son of man figure will indeed be the judge of the last days. So here suffering uh, is tied together uh, with the resurrection of the dead, together with a final judgment in which God will reward the righteous and uh, punish the wicked. Now, all of these ideas are found in the Hebrew scripture, uh, but they're brought to a very sharp focus, yes, uh, in this period, uh, just before the time of Jesus.